Hello and welcome to this episode of ZNotes Live in collaboration with Mega Lecture, where we are covering question three of paper 22 of the October-November 2019 series for AS Economics. We have Kasim from Mega Lectures with us today. Kasim, why don't you tell us a bit about Mega Lectures? Sure. So Mega Lecture is an online teaching platform uh, based in Pakistan. It started back in 2018. And since then, we have grown to quite some size. Uh, during COVID, we received a lot of student queries because schools were closed. And since then, we have expanded significantly. So now we are a team of over 30 teachers um, who are based in different um, countries and different cities of Pakistan. And we are primarily focusing on Cambridge, Dexel, AQA, and these different formats of uh, um, high school exams. Uh, apart from that, we offer also offer uh, classes in standardized tests, including SAT, IELTS, English proficiency, and so on. So really excited to be here. Perfect. We're doing a series of videos with you, and this is the first one. Great. Okay, over to you. Let's get started. Okay, great. So students, today we'll do uh, paper two of AS Economics, which as you would know, is data response and essay question. So today we'll do an essay question and I'll walk you through how to first read and understand the question, what is expected of you when you're writing your answer, what points to include, and what are the different levels on which you are marked and graded for your um, essay, right? So let's get started. So as I already told to you, this is October, November 2019, and the total duration for the uh, exam is one hour, 30 minutes, but it's divided in two sections, section A and section B. Section A is compulsory case study, right? So I'll quickly show you, right? So it's a compulsory case study uh, based on which there are different questions totaling to 20 marks, right? So that's not something that we'll cover in uh, this session, but definitely in the upcoming sessions, we can do one of the case studies so that you get a better idea how to attempt case study questions. So for today's class, what we'll be focusing on is essay questions, right? So section B um, has two, uh, sorry, three essay questions out of which you need to attempt one, right? So we'll be doing um, the, uh, we'll, we'll be doing the third, uh, the question number three in this um, essay, right? So the question here says, let me read the question and then I'll walk you um, step by step as to how you should write your answer. I'll also write some important definitions in the Word document and then uh, in the middle if there are any graphs or diagrams that need to be added, I'll also do that. Okay, now the question here says, students, this is question number three, explain how knowledge of price elasticity of demand for a good can help businesses to assess the impact of price changes upon their total revenue, right? So how the understanding of price elasticity of demand can help businesses assess the impact of price changes upon their total revenue, right? So now there are a couple of keywords that you need to identify in the question before you get started, because obviously the question is based on those key points. And until unless you don't explain those points, I mean, you, you can um, just skip uh, the definition part and directly jump to the explanation, but it's always recommended to give the examiner, um, you know, an idea that you know the definitions and uh, that would only be possible when you define those terms explicitly in your answer, right? So my style is and the way I teach is that I tell students to uh, give definitions of the key terms and then uh, come to the main part of the question, right? So the keywords over here, let me highlight for you. Uh, price elasticity of demand and um, when price of a product changes, how does that affect total revenue, right? So let's get started here. So first thing that you have to do is to um, define if the size is not, uh, right? So, right, uh, let me share, uh, right, the other screen with you. So just a second, right. In fact, let's say we can do it like this. Okay, now this is where I'll be writing the question, oh, sorry, writing the answer, right? So that you can see what I'm writing and all that, right? So first of all, you need to define what price elasticity of demand is. So very simply speaking, price elasticity of demand is a formula that calculates the percentage change in quantity demanded of a product, quantity demanded 
ignore my typos uh, quantity demanded of a product due to change in product price right now the first thing that you have told the examiner that what exactly price elasticity of demand is as you would you would already know that it's a formula that calculates the percentage change in quantity demand of a product due to percentage change in product price right so very simply speaking it's uh, simply a formula right so we define ped as right so it would be the short form of uh, price elasticity of demand is PED, and the way you calculate it is percentage change in quantity demanded, right? Percentage change this triangle in maths mean delta, uh, percentage change in quantity demanded. So I'm writing down the short form, right? QD divided by percentage change in price. Okay, now think about this. So when you do this calculation for different products, you get to observe different results, right? So either the quantity would be more elastic, um, as we say, or I, the demand would be more elastic or less elastic, right? And how do we determine that, right? Then the next thing that you need to tell the examiner that how we differentiate between different type of products, right? So based on their elasticity, how do we classify products in different categories? If the overall value of PED, right? So in fact, what you can do is at the start, you can put this in brackets, right? For the examiner to know, even though it's a, um, you know, well-known uh, acronym, PED is a well-known acronym in economics. That means price loss to demand. But still, just to be clear, when you have written the word price elasticity of demand for the first time, you can put it in brackets PED, right? So if the overall value of PED is greater than one then it is more elastic and what exactly does that mean which means that any change in product price would result in more than more than proportionate change in uh, demand for the good or product right so think about this so the idea is fairly simple so either the ped of a product price elasticity of demand for a good will be more elastic or less elastic if it's more elastic what it means that any change in price is resulting more than proportionate change in demand right so for instance if price is changing by two percent the demand will be changing by something more than two it could be three four five six seven anything right so that's what more elastic is right so first you define what ped then you define what more um, elastic demand is. I will not be writing about the inelastic, but um, ideally you should write that in question as well, that less elastic um, demand is when percentage change in price results in less than proportionate, right? By the way, what you can simply do is that in your uh, statement, you can also add the word vice versa. Now, what that means simply that if it's more elastic, that means percentage change in price results in more than proportionate change in demand. And vice versa would imply that less elastic demand means that any change in price would result in less than proportionate change, right? Then after you've explained this, um, ideally, uh, it helps to give some examples from real life, uh, some real life uh, examples to, you know, uh, make it clear to the examiner that you have good understanding of the concept. So for that, I usually uh, tell my students to mention um, some examples so you can Right, for instance, um, necessities like food items, clothing, um, education expense, right, are less elastic since any change in these product prices does not result in significant change in their demand okay now think about this by giving this example what we have told the examiner that we know that the basic items the basic um, you know um, basic items like necessities that we have to use no matter how much expensive or cheap they are um, their change in their price doesn't 
change their demand a lot, right? So let's let's think about it like this. I mean, if food is becoming cheaper, it's not that we'll start consuming more. A little bit more, perhaps, yes, right? But still, I mean, our consumption of food, at least basic food items, stays relatively stable. Similarly, food becomes expensive. Again, we don't have the option of not eating, right? So these basic necessities, right? Electricity expense, education, clothing, food items. So these are less elastic products. On the other hand, any product um, or luxuries, right? Have more elastic demand, why so? Because any change in these product prices results in results in more than proportionate change results in proportionate we have already mentioned above so let's let's use another word here results in more change or in their demand this is it making sense right now let's take an example here for instance any decrease in uh, concert tickets movie tickets or concert tickets would result in significant increase in their demand this is it making sense right so then you have also given an example of after defining what PED is right then you define what more elastic and less elastic is then you also gave examples for the two type of products right less elastic is um, our products that have um, less change in demand due to change in price right because these are necessities and no matter what happens to their prices whether price is increasing or decreasing there is change in demand but not that much right not not, not that huge Right. On the other hand, for luxury items which are defined as more elastic products, any change in their price um, results in significant change in their demand. So, for instance, if movie tickets or concerts are becoming, are, are you know, uh, their prices are decreasing, then a lot of people uh, will want to buy those and attend those and all that right um similarly on the other hand when their prices increase for movie tickets or um, concert tickets then a lot of people would decrease their demand because that goes beyond their um, affordability and perhaps um, and also because it's not a necessity which means that they can um, look for alternatives like movie tickets if they're really expensive you can switch to online streaming movie streaming platforms netflix and so on right uh, but for food items or necessities i mean that's not an option so their demand is relatively stable okay after you've explained all of this right now the question was saying how change in the price of products would help uh, you know you to understand so let me show you the question here um, how the knowledge of price losses demand for a good can help businesses to assess the impact of price changes upon their total revenue now what's total revenue students so total revenue is simply speaking the receipt from the sale of your goods right products right so for instance if mega lectures on online teaching platform how many um how much total fee do we collect in a certain period could be a month a week right that would be our revenue right so simply speaking total revenue is the total receipt of cash money from the sale of your products from the sale of business products right so whatever it is selling could be food items could be fast food could be clothes could be anything right so have a look at this so total revenue is the total receipt of cash money from the sale of business products so even if you would not have defined this total revenue term in your um, in your answer that is perfectly fine why because that's very obvious term and examiners don't um, expect you to write definition for all of these things but i mean uh, a simple definition one line definition doesn't harm so that's why um, i'm in the habit of doing that and i also encourage my students to do that okay after you've explained this now you come to the main part of the question and the main part is that how businesses assess change in total revenue due to change in the price of their products right so have a look at this if the product demand is more elastic any change in price um, right um, would sorry if the product demand is more elastic 
right? Then increase in product price would result in decrease in total revenue. Have a look at this, right? Now, the statement I've written over here is if the product demand is more elastic, right, which means it's a luxury item, increase in the product price would result in decrease in total revenue. Why? Have a look at this. The reason for that is that what is revenue? Revenue is sum of, sorry, revenue is product of price per unit, price per unit into quantity sold. Now, when price is increasing, there would be more decrease in demand and therefore overall the answer that you get, right? For more elastic we are talking about. There is increase in price, right? But the decrease in quantity is bigger for more elastic I'm talking about, right? So that's what I explained over here. For more elastic, right? So for more elastic, increase in price results in decrease in total revenue. And I'm just trying to explain you why that happens. You don't need to really explain that in um, in your exam or in an answer. Reason being is that this is something math mathematically true and uh, examiner would know that you as economics student would know why that happened, right? But just to, for your own understanding, what is revenue? Revenue is price per unit times quantity. So if there is any increase in price of the good, for luxury items, I did tell you that the decrease in demand is more significant or, you know, more proportionate, more than proportionate. So therefore, the decrease in demand would be much bigger and therefore, overall, your total revenue decreases. However, if on the other hand, and vice versa, right? So I did tell you what vice versa means. Vice versa means that on the other hand, if product price is decreasing, your total revenue will increase. For what product? For more elastic goods. Is this making sense? Right? For more elastic, increase in price decreases revenue, decrease in price increases revenue. Is this making sense? And I'll give you a very relevant example in this case. Have you ever observed that during um, Christmas or during holiday season, um, there are a lot of discounts being offered? But on what products? only on products that are not necessities, right? So if you think about um, clothing, perhaps like expensive clothing, right? So you'll get discounts, you'll see discounts on home appliances, you'll see discounts on other video games and, you know, perhaps um, other things, right? But it's quite, um, you know, likely that you will not get to see these discounts on basic items. Now think about this, what's the reason for that? Why would I, as a producer for basic necessities, want to give discounts when I know that the demand would not increase significantly, right? So if someone wants to, if someone consumes like one bottle of milk per day, I mean, giving a discount doesn't mean that they'll start buying more. Yes or no, right? Or they'll start consuming more milk. Their demand is relatively stable. So what's the point of giving them a discount on that? However, if on products like movie tickets and, you know, home appliances and other things, I give discounts and the demand increases significantly. So that's the reason why I want to give discounts. And that's why it explains the fact that for more elastic, you decrease price to get higher total revenue. Is this making sense, students? Okay. Now, moving forward for the inelastic products, right? On the other hand, for less elastic or inelastic, that means the same thing, less or in, right? Less elastic or inelastic products, increase in price increases total revenue. Increase in price increases total revenue, right? Now, one of my favorites, favorite examples that I always give to students, right? So, um, increases total revenue, right? So, during... Um, uh, during Ramzan, right, when um, Muslims are fasting, right, so oftentimes people criticize the fact that, you know, uh, food items become more expensive and all that, right. Now, if you look at economics, there is a very, you know, valid justification available for that. Now, think about this. If you are a producer for food items and you know that people are fasting and, you know, they have to, they, they would wish to, um, you know, break their fast with their favorite food, then why would you want to give them a discount, right? It's not that giving discount would start making them eat more, but higher prices would still uh, make them consume the same quantity that they have to. Are you getting me, right? So food items are, you know, 
necessities and therefore people consume the amount they have to consume so increasing their price helps you like the producer i mean helps producers to get more revenue right are you getting me so on the other hand for less or inelastic product increase in uh, price increases total revenue this is making sense so this is complete opposite of what was happening in more elastic products am i clear on this right so that's what you need to say then comes in unique cases right now the last thing that we'll discuss here so we have talked about more elastic less elastic but we do know that this is not all there are other uh, categories of elasticity as well right so other um, categories of elasticity are unitary elastic right now what is unitary elastic you would know that when change in price results in proportionate change in demand so proportionate means the same right so if price is changing by 5% demand would also change by 5% if uh, price is changing by 7% demand would also change by 7% now in the case of unitary elastic no matter what the change in price is whether that's increasing or decreasing the total revenue always remains constant right again this is something that's mathematically true right you don't need to give any any you know um, uh, proof of that in your in your answer total revenue always stays constant right so no matter what the change in um, your price is whether increase or decrease um, the overall revenue in case of unitary elastic stays constant we got on this students okay now then moving on to two more cases of elasticity then one more cases perfectly inelastic now what is perfectly inelastic now if you um think of um things like um, you know uh, medical drugs right now medical drugs or medicines simply speaking um have perfectly inelastic demand right a uh, perfectly inelastic demand why because no matter what happens to you know the prices you can't afford to uh, not consume those products right so if i have to quickly show you the graph for perfectly inelastic demand right so it's a straight vertical line and we have price on the y axis for the demand curve you would know right and we have quantity demanded on the x axis right so it will be a perfectly inelastic uh, perfectly inelastic demand curve is a straight or a vertical line why because no matter what the price is no matter what the price is you'll still consume the same quantity so if you think about insulin that you know a medicine that diabetic people um, diabetic people need to take so whether prices are increasing or decreasing if doctor has prescribed you five um, you know injections in a week so you have to take those no matter what yes or no so demand is quantity is constant no matter what the change in prices now think about this for this type of elasticity the higher the price the more the revenue obviously right and revenue increases proportionate to the increase in price so if producer is increasing the price of each injection of insulin from let's say uh, 10 pounds to 15 pounds right or 20 pounds let's make it double right so if the price of each injection of insulin rises from 10 pounds to 20 pounds right then your revenue would also double since prices are doubling the revenue would also double is making sense right okay now moving on to the very last uh, case of elasticity which is perfectly elastic right now the very last case of elasticity is perfectly elastic now in this case prices don't change right so perfectly elastic is when your demand curve is straight horizontal line right you would know that um, I'll, I'll show you on the graph so the previous case that we discussed was perfectly inelastic please don't get confused with these two right and this one that we're talking about this was perfectly inelastic right now this one that we are about um, to look at is perfectly elastic right so it's a straight horizontal line right Pr price on the y-axis quantity demanded for of the good on the x-axis right so quantity demanded is on the x-axis so qd and price on the y-axis now in this case the price doesn't change right so at this price you can demand whatever quantity you want right 100 units or 200 units or whatever right but your price doesn't change so this thing doesn't really apply um, in the you know uh, the question that's being asked here doesn't really apply to perfectly elastic why because uh, in perfectly elastic price don't change at all so 
um, that's the idea, right? But for all the other four cases, right? So that was the fourth one that we discussed. Then it was unitary elastic, um, the third one, and then the first two were more elastic and less elastic, right? So we have explained for all the four types that um, how changes in prices uh, would affect the total revenue. Um, and this is how uh, a business person can use the elasticity to determine the change in their revenue. Should we do the second one as well? Yeah, if you want to, yeah. Okay, okay, great. Uh, Okay, now students, moving on to the second B part of the question, it says since the demand for a demerit good such as cigarettes is price inelastic, a tax on the product is waste of time. What is needed? What is needed is better awareness amongst consumers of the negative effects of smoking cigarettes. Discuss this view, right? Now, what you will observe in um, AS economics exam that the B part is usually more analytical that asks you for your evaluation and suggestions, whereas the A part is mainly knowledge based, right? And the same thing you can observe in this question as well that the A part was simply asking you to tell uh, from your knowledge and what you have learned in your classes that how price and revenue are related. And here it's asking you that what type of policy um, the government should implement if it wants to discourage people from smoking, right? Now, the question is very straightforward. It asks you to comment on, it asks you to comment on how effective are taxes uh, to discourage people from smoking, right? So what type of taxes are imposed, right? Let me see if they have mentioned, uh, right? Right. So they haven't mentioned the type of uh, taxes, right? But obviously we do know um, indirect taxes, any tax that's imposed on consumption is an indirect tax. On the other hand, any tax that's imposed on income, wealth or property, that's direct tax, right? So indirect taxes, you don't really need to, and this is for your own understanding, but if you want to write it on the exam, that's perfectly fine. Now, indirect taxes are taxes imposed on consumption, which is one possible way to discourage um, consumption of demerit goods like cigarettes, right? Okay, after you've explained this, what you need to uh, do next is to uh, mention that how indirect taxes will discourage uh, smoking, right? Are you getting me, right? So since the question is asking you that um, your opinion, the question is asking your opinion as to how much effective uh, taxes could be to discourage smoking and um, in comparison, in comparison to creating awareness. So these are the two policies government can use either to impose taxes on cigarettes or to create awareness amongst people as to how much harmful smoking is. And the question wants you to present your opinion as to which of the two do you think will be more effective. Okay. Now, first of all, obviously, you'll define and explain both ways how those uh, policies um, could, you know, help with the uh, cigarette consumption, right? Reduce cigarette consumption. So first of all, you'll explain those. And then in the end, in your conclusion, you'll comment as to which of the two do you expect to be more effective? Okay. Now getting started here, what you'll say is that with indirect taxes imposed, the cost of production for product increases and therefore, it shifts the supply curve to the left, right? So what you're saying here, right? You're explaining the process how taxes can discourage smoking, right? So when uh, indirect taxes are imposed on any product, let's say cigarettes in this case, right? So that means um, as soon as a producer produces a product, it has to pay, um, you know, sales tax, to, to the government, right? Now, each packet of cigarettes would cost the producer more since it's not only the cost of manufacturing cigarettes like the uh, raw material like tobacco and the paper and you know packaging and the printing and all that, but on top of that, there would also be um, some amount of tax that has to be paid. I'll show you with the help of a graph in a bit, but first of all, let's understand this the theoretically. So when your cost of production is increasing because now sales tax is an, another 
cost component that the producer has to pay that increases its cost of production and as we know when cost of production increases supply curve shifts to the left right with that happening less supply and the same demand right the prices will bid up right the prices of the product go up right and that would discourage smoking right because some people would now find it more expensive so they might quit smoking they might some of them might switch to alternatives some of them might completely quit right so we'll comment on all of that in a bit but before that let's look at how this actually um, you know how this actually looks like right now what you will do you will make a simple graph right so you'll make a simple graph with price and cost on the y-axis right, and your quantity of cigarettes on the x-axis, right? So you have price and cost on the y-axis and you have quantity of cigarettes on the x-axis. Quantity of cigarettes, right? We go to this. Okay. Now, first thing that you'll draw is normal downward sloping demand curve, which I'm labeling as D1 and normal upward sloping supply curve. Excuse my... Right. So let's draw it like this, right? A normal upward sloping supply curve. Now, where the supply and demand S1 and D1, where the initial demand and supply were intersecting, that was your original equilibrium price. Yes or no? So let's assume before government imposed taxes, per packet of cigarettes was 10 pounds. Each packet of cigarettes was 10 pounds before government imposed taxes on the product, right? Now, then what happened, right? As I explained to you, when government imposed cigarettes, right, your supply curve shifted to the left since that increased the cost of producing cigarettes for the producers, right? Now, when supply shifts to the left, supply being reduced and demand being the same, your new equilibrium uh, price would be at a higher point, obviously, where the new supply curve intersects with your new, sorry, where the, the new supply curve intersects with your demand curve. So let's assume now the price of each packet of cigarettes is 15 pounds. Are we getting this right now when price increases as happens always right the law of demand higher the price lower the demand right so you will see contraction in demand you will see contraction in demand because product is now more expensive so if previously um, let's assume uh, previously uh, you know there was consumption of let's say um, I don't know 10 million packets per year right um, in a certain country right then with higher prices this consumption would obviously drop down because not everyone would want to buy this expensive um, expensive cigarettes and therefore now the demand might reduce to 80 million or something right oh sorry 8 million right 8 million right are we getting this so there will be definitely some decrease in demand however it depends on the elasticity now if you remember um, elasticity is something that would determine that how much will be the decrease because any change in price uh, does decrease any sorry any increase in price of a product it does decrease your demand but by how much that's dependent on the product elasticity right so if it's more elastic there will be more decrease if there is if it's less elastic there will be less decrease and this is exactly what the question was saying that demand for cigarettes is less elastic why because these are addictive products, right? Um, so this is what I'm writing next. However, given, right, are addictive, therefore, the demand is less elastic and hence any increase in price to taxes would result in only a small decrease in their consumption right are you getting so the idea is that since these products are addictive which means that people it's a habit forming thing right so people who are addictive to smoking they will not uh, give up on this product so easily right it's inelastic and we can even show that on a graph right so if you if you remember when you are drawing less elastic demands right so less elastic demand curve is more steep compared to more elastic right so if this is for more elastic which is less steep as you can see 
The other one, the steep one, is for less lasting. And when you show the same graph that I um, made on the previous slide, that for less lasting, if I would have made the demand curve steep, you would have seen that the de decrease in demand would have been even smaller compared to what it is, right? Compared to what it is right now, just a second, compared to what it is right now, if I would have made the demand curve steep, right, you would have seen much smaller decrease in demand, right? And the idea is fairly simple. Since these products are habit forming, so any text would, or any increase in price would only result in a small, um, you know, a small change in demand. Right? So yes or no, right? So with the steep demand curve, there would only be a small decrease in demand. Easy, we good on this? Okay. Now, this being said, then you'll explain the other policy that the government is proposing, which is through awareness, right? On the other hand, on the other hand, government can also discourage smoking through creating awareness about the harmful effects of smoking, right? Now, another uh, possible way to discourage smoking is to create awareness um, as to how much harmful this smoking is, right? Right? Uh, okay, now in this case, what will happen? Now, in this case, the supply will stay the same because there is no change in the cost of production. There is no change in um, any other factor that affects supply. So supply of cigarettes will stay the same. No shift in supply curve. However, when government is creating more awareness about the harmful effects of smoking, the demand curve shifts to the left, right? And why would the demand curve shift to the left? The idea is fairly simple that now some people will realize, right? I mean, realize some people will realize that it's a harmful product that's affecting their health um that can increases increase chances of you know heart attack blah 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 whatever right so the idea is let's say if this was your original demand for cigarettes and this was your original supply and this was your original equilibrium point where the two were equal right showing you the equilibrium price p1 and um equilibrium quantity q1 now when government now when government create uh, creates awareness right so that means the demand curve shifts to the left because some people realize it's a harmful product um and they should either cut on uh, its consumption or they should completely um, quit smoking right so when that happens the demand curve the new demand curve would be to the left right and you can see for yourself that now the new demand curve is intersecting with your supply at a lower point right so the prices would decrease and at the same time the equilibrium quantity would also decrease because now some people have um are thinking of quitting smoking or they have already quit or so on right we go on this so this is the decrease in demand is it making sense okay so these graphs so one more thing that i forgot to mention even though the question doesn't say with the help of a diagram, right? I mean, some questions you'll come across where the wording goes like with the help of a graph or with the help of a diagram, explain how this will happen and so on, right? So in those questions, it's compulsory for you to make a, a diagram, right? But for these questions, it's not um, mandatory to make a graph, but in case you know a relevant graph and um, you can, you, you are confident that you can draw it correctly, then go for it and do draw the graph because that will help you get some extra credit, right? Is it making sense? Okay. Now this being said, so you will explain to the examiner that how uh, creating awareness would help discourage smoking and so on. And then you need to come and compare the two policy uh, policies, right? Um, so one is indirect access, the other one is creating awareness, right? Now, if I would have been, by the way, another thing that's important to remember, that no matter which of the two you choose, you will still get marks based on your reasoning and argument rather than which side did you choose. Are you getting me, right? So it's not about the correct or the wrong, right? It's just your own opinion. As long as you're giving valid arguments and reasoning for your uh, choice, that's perfectly fine. So for instance, if I write about the indirect taxes, I would say that when product becomes more expensive, even though the demand is inelastic, but when the product become more expensive, people will switch to 
people will switch to either uh, you know other things or they will quit smoking altogether and this is something that you can also uh, prove by um, data that in countries where cigarettes are relatively cheaper there is more consumption compared to countries where smoking is cigarettes are more expensive right um i i can talk out of my own experience in usa each packet of cigarettes is like uh, the least the cheapest brand you can get there is for 10 dollar 10 and you know so on which is way more expensive than what it is in pakistan so a couple of people over there who um, who, who were smokers back in pakistan don't Uh, smoke right so this is definitely because of the fact that it's more expensive right so coming back to the point so um you you can argue like this that higher prices will discourage people to smoke um because uh, obviously uh, the opportunity cost of smoking has increased and so on and so forth right um but obviously we can't ignore the fact that when something is more addictive when something is as addictive as a cigarette then um people will continue spending more money um and so on but the good thing about this is that um, at least the revenue that the government collects from smoking right could perhaps be used to treat um, you know uh, the heart patients or you know other people uh um, you, you, who have some serious health problems later on uh, due to constant smoking in their lifetime and so on right so this type of reasoning is expected of you then moving on to the creating awareness part right now this comes with its own challenges right so apparently it sound very um you know um, it might sound very Uh, good that creating awareness would help people stop smoking but how effective is this is a question to is a question that policy makers should ask themselves why because in this case um, it would be difficult to really um, you know get some data and statistics to verify this obviously there would be some effect but how effective that's hard to say right so i mean you can't perhaps really calculate that if government is running an advertisement on national television or national radio station about how smoking um, negatively affects your health then how many people are cut on smoking due to that right whereas on the other hand um, you can easily compare the data uh, before uh tax how much was the consumption of cigarettes and after tax how much was the consumption you can see how much is the decrease and so on right so i mean this type of thing and again um it's not that people don't have uh, knowledge or people don't have information about these things nowadays especially in this age of in this age and time where internet and all these um, other information is so readily available but still people continue to smoke which clearly shows that perhaps uh, this is not a very effective a uh, way to discourage smoking right but then um yeah so that, that that's the idea right and then after you have given arguments in favor of and against both uh, you know policies then you, you can choose the final one so for instance i would have written that uh, taxes are uh, still a better way to discourage smoking why because um, when products become expensive people um, reduce their consumption or um you know stop consuming them altogether and secondly in the case of taxes it will get government some revenue which could be spent um for you know creating awareness as well and then spending money on uh, people or you know so on and so forth where the government can encourage uh, healthy lifestyles and so on whereas for creating awareness simply would only mean that government is spending money out of its own pocket through the tax payers money um and how much effective would that be is subject to uh, question right so that's what you expected to do in this uh, b part perfect yeah i noticed on the mark scheme there's a mark for including the conclusion that's something that people should never forget is it a conclusion on an essay question like this yeah 